I've covered both DoorDash and Uber, the, go the gig economy space, for a long time. And what I always like to look at is valuations. When I look at a Dash versus an Uber, Dash is, you know, wildly more expensive with a forward price to earnings ratio of more than 500. So why get in now? Well, I think what Dash has proven, and it's interesting you mentioned Uber, you know, it's really in the restaurant space is a, a two-legged, uh, you know, two-headed race here. And, you know, we characterize Dash as, you know, three laps in front of, of Uber Eats. Um, so in terms of the relative valuation, I can't comment on on that, because I don't, I don't cover Uber itself, but I can say that what Dash has proven is that they have um, command of the restaurant delivery space. They have three X greater share than than Uber Eats, and I think their network effects, it's classic network effects here, where they have you know close to 40 million mm -hmm. MAUs and you know, several million drivers that like, afford them the ability to move that into other verticals. Uh, you know, that being grocery as well as brick and mortar retail, which I think are some pretty interesting opportunities uh, for them uh, that really hasn't really crossed their, their revenue uh, screen yet. Right, and Dash has been making a big push into groceries where the basket size is larger, so seen as more profitable. And I wonder though, it, it does sometimes feel like a race to the bottom. You've got Instacart, right, which has become public just in the last six months or so, and they're really trying to compete with each other and they're doing that on Pricing. How does that trickle down to the bottom bottom line? I think that's a that's a fair uh, characterization. I think the, the the challenge with grocery is really you're dealing with legacy systems. Number one, that don't uh, afford uh, you know, the best sort of inventory management that uh, makes selection a challenge oftentimes uh, for a consumer. And I think, frankly, just the consumer is, is in terms of adopting. Uh, you know, online grocery, it's been mm -hmm. slow. And we, it moved up to, you know, roughly 15% of total grocery was right. purchased online during COVID, and that's fallen back to 12%. Uh, and I think that, you know, the differences between CART and Dash, CART was certainly in front of, of Dash and has a really strong platform, uh, but they don't have a, a real strong uh, user base. At 7 million, uh, that's not a tremendous base to scale with and I think where Dash can offer, I think not only extension to Cart's existing mm -hmm. grocers, uh, but also sort of build out his own moat. There is by extending that you know sort of 40 million uh, user base across you know just a broader spectrum of, of of retailers. So I think that's one. I think the other the other piece just branching out from from grocery is brick and mortar retail. If you think about brick and mortar, they're they're facing Amazon every day increasingly moving to same day delivery. And what, uh, you know, what Dash is doing, leveraging that, you know, several million driver network of theirs is, is providing them the ability to deliver their product same day. So if you're buying a pair of sneakers on Dick's Sporting Goods or, you know, buying a, you know, a tool, at, uh, tool set at Lowe's, you can get that same day uh, with uh, just a modest subsidy from, uh, you know, from the, uh, retail themselves.